Hello, hello again. This is Stephanie with Apex Languages. I have another Words of the Week. Now, I know I'm a little bit late for Valentine's Day, but this week I wanted to share with you guys a couple of romantic idioms, including tie the knot. It's never too late for romance, especially if we're going to be snowed in with nothing better to do. So let's see what we've got. First, let's review again what an idiom is. I talked about it briefly before. An idiom is an expression. It is a set of words, a series of words that together mean something different than when the words are individual. Let's say that word together. Idiom, idiom, idiom. It comes, it's a noun. It comes from Greek, uh, and, and the word regularly meant uniqueness. So again, this idea that uh, together these words have a unique, special meaning. My favorite example, again, is it is raining cats and dogs, right? So normally cats and dogs mean something that's very different, but together it's just a fun expression that we use. Idioms are very difficult to learn um, because you're not expecting them a lot of the times. They're, they're very common, and it's hard to tell when someone's using an idiom. So I try to introduce you to some on a regular basis uh, to help you sound a little bit more native-like. So again, we're talking about relationships today. What's our first idiom? Head over heels. When you are head over heels for someone, the preposition for is used. It means you're crazy. <laughs> you're just crazy in love. You're cr head over heels in love. It, it's a shortened version of that. And the original term was heels over head. This actually is an expression that comes all the way from Latin, from the Romans. Uh, and for some reason, it's a little weird because head over heels makes sense. Normally your head is over your heels. Somehow the expression went to heels over the head, back to head over heels. I, I, obviously it's crazy. Everything's crazy. But this is the idea is that you're standing on your head, that you're just out of your mind because you love somebody. He is head over heels for the new girl. Okay, He's crazy in love. Another idiom that we have is the apple of someone's eye. And that can be used for a, you know, a romantic relationship, but it can also be used for um, you know, your children, uh, just anybody who's very special. The apple of someone's eye is basically, think about like the center of your eye, okay? It's just the most special person this person can do no wrong they are they are wonderful and amazing so she is the apple of his eye or he is the apple of her eye if the apple of your eye is also head over heels for you then you guys can become a couple or an item oh look at that cute couple over there haven't you heard jill and george are an item now Okay, couple is the more general term. They're a couple um, uh, with item. That's, you know, a, a little bit more slang. They're an item. They are something worth talking about because they're in a relationship. Very high schooly. Um, but, you know, also office politics. All right, so couple and an item. Now, after you've been going steady for a while, you might decide that it's time to propose, to ask somebody to marry you. We've got some idioms for that too. The first one is pop the question. Because what is the, remember the is specific? So what is the most important question you can ever ask in your life, in theory? Okay, well, you're asking someone to spend the rest of their life with you. The idea of pop 
is it's a surprise. Okay, nobody sees it coming if you do it, if you do it right. All right, so you're you're popping the question out of nowhere. You're surprising your loved one and saying, "Make me the happiest man on earth. Will you marry me?" We also have ask for someone's hand. And this one is a little easier to see. You are asking someone to give you their hand so that you can uh, walk together through life. Okay, so the, um, you can see there, you ask for somebody's hand in marriage. Again, it's a shortened version of that. So Steve popped the question and Stacy said yes. You can see this next one's a little different. Same idea, uh, just phrased a little differently. Steve asked Stacy for her hand and she said yes. And finally, it's the wedding day. So, how do you say to get married? We've got a couple different ways. First one, as you saw at the very beginning, is to tie the knot. Okay, and this one you're taking two different ropes, two different families, two, two different people, and you're tying them together so they're stuck together for life. Okay, so my brother and his fiance are tying the knot later this year. Uh, fiance, you'll see, has got an accent mark, not very common in English, but this is a French word. Okay, fiance. Uh, so they're tying the knot. My husband and I tied the knot 11 years ago. So I've given you a couple different examples. Next you have get hitched. Now hitch uh, is to tie up specifically like a horse. So you can see in the picture, okay, that's an example of a horse that has been hitched. And so it's a very similar idea to tie the knot, okay the your wife to be is a horse apparently and you're tying her up so that nobody else can can get her so she won't run away uh traditionally that's probably pretty accurate although of course you don't really want to say that um you, you'll get beaten up uh the sentence the, the way that it's used all of these are verbal idioms so they're all used uh virtually identically okay my brother and his fiance are getting hitched later this year okay uh get hitch that's a very that is a passive idea okay get is equivalent to be hitched that's just less formal okay tying the knot uh, get hitched is less formal than tie the knot it's just fun let's get hitched uh Maybe that one would be a little bit more common if you were in Las Vegas and um, and very drunk and you said, Let, let's get hitched. Let's not tell any of our parents. Let's just go to a chapel and get married. Apparently that happens quite often in Vegas. Um, but, you know, it, it is a respectable term. You can use either. Get hitched is just a little less formal. The last one I have for you today is jump the broom. Okay. This one is more of um, a Southern African-American tradition. Okay, you can see the decorated broom in the picture. And so during the wedding ceremony, so it's a, a wedding tradition, at the very end, the couple jumps over the broom. And so uh, it's less common. It, it's more cultural. It's more uh, regional. But... You know, if you hear it, you know, we're not talking about witches here. Jumping the broom means that you get married. So my husband and I jumped the broom 11 years ago. All right, let's get a little practice in. Practice makes perfect. Write me in the comments, in an email. Write about someone you were head over heels for. Did y'all become an item? Did you get hitched? Are you living happily ever after? That last one isn't really an idiom, but it's very, um, very traditional in all of our fairy tales, all our, our, our stories. Okay. I hope you are living happily ever after. But that is it for me. Thank you as always for watching my videos. Check out more at apexlanguages.com. 
have a wonderful, safe weekend. Go out and enjoy the snow. See you later.